Today we come looking for Christ, the Christ child. We come bringing our hurts, our worries, our fears. We come seeking relief from our pain. With the psalmist of old we say, You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify the Lord. Stand in all of, of you offspring of Israel, for the Lord did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. The Lord did not hide his face from me, but heard me when I cried to him. Good evening. I welcome you to our Blue Christmas service. This is December 21st. It's the shortest day of the year and the longest night of the year, the winter solstice. And so it is an appropriate time for us to have this service of worship in which we recognize the darkness, in which we recognize the sadness and the difficulty and the grief that may be a part of the Christmas celebration for you. Perhaps you are missing someone you love. Perhaps your family isn't able to visit you this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Whatever the cause, we pray that this will be a time, that this will be a service in which you experience God's presence in the midst of that darkness, bringing you a little bit of hope, bringing you a little bit of light. This darkness reminds us that there are many times when we feel as if we can do nothing, that all of our efforts to touch into the joy of the season go nowhere. And so we do the only thing we can do, and that is go before God in prayer. So let us do that now. Let us pray. God of mercy. Hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and for our families and friends who live with the struggles of illness and the pain of loss. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who shares our life in joy and sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. The presence of lights 
so central to our celebration of Christmas has its beginning in pagan festivals. The people who shared in these festivals also shared in the geography of the Northern Hemisphere, where short days and long winter nights increase the absence of light. The Yuletide, the medieval pagan celebration of the winter solstice, which centered on the ceremonial burning of the Yule log, an emblem of hope for the returning of the source of light and heat, the sun was at its center. Christians who shared in these fears and in these anxieties adopted this tradition with the understanding that Jesus himself was seen as the light of the world. The light of the Yule log came to represent Jesus, symbolizing the battle between good and evil. And as the fire grew brighter and hotter, as the log turned to ashes, it symbolized Christ's final and ultimate triumph over sin and over darkness. And over the years, the Yule log morphed into the Christmas tree, which is a central part of our celebration in this time and in this day. As part of our service tonight, I'll be sharing a scripture that doesn't seem to fit the Christmas season. There will be no stories of Bethlehem, of shepherds, of wise men, no pronouncements of angels. Instead, tonight, we will be looking at Psalm 22. And we'll look at Psalm 22 because it's known as a psalm of lament. It is a psalm that pulls no punches when it comes to, ex to sharing the experience of being abandoned by God. It may have been the, the psalm that was on the very tongue of Jesus as he hung on the cross and said, Oh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the Psalms of Lament, the people of the Hebrew Scriptures shared their deepest pain, their greatest longings for God, and their greatest anger at God, for they shared in that sense of abandonment and wondered how a God who promised steadfast love, a God who promised to always be present, a God who promised to be there in the darkest valleys, why this God felt so absent. Why in the midst of their pain and suffering did God not seem present at all? And so they wrote their psalms of lament. What's interesting about these psalms is that in the middle of them, that somewhere a shift happens. In the sharing of the raw emotions, in the sharing of the disappointment and the hurt and the anger, the shift comes to expressions of hope and trust and thanks and praise. So as I read this psalm tonight, I'll be placing the pleadings of the psalmist next to the same psalmist's words of praise and thanks for the different remembrances that they had had in the past when God did act to save them. Hear these words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they were trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cost to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. 
Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight, I want to share with you a story, the story that was shared with me by Lori Hallisey, who talked about her difficulties in Christmas, about the blue Christmases that she has endured since the death of her parents. And I'm thankful for her, for her willingness to share and for the way that God broke through the darkness to bring her into the light. Pastor Branch's request for me to participate in this service led me to realize that I have had my share of blue Christmases, particularly in recent years. Although I may not have realized it at the time, looking back, it is very evident that God walked with me and sustained me every step of the way. On Christmas Eve 2014, my beloved dad underwent a very risky emergency surgery on his carotid artery. Surgery went surprisingly well, and he was discharged on Christmas morning. That night, he suffered a heart attack and was taken back to the hospital by ambulance. Needless to say, Lori says, this was an extremely stressful time for our family and all of our Christmas celebrations were put on a back burner. Fortunately, I was eventually able to see all the ways in which God was making his presence known during that difficult time. He supported mom and I and gave us strength. He provided a skilled surgeon who sacrificed his own time with family to operate on dad. He gave dad the gift of life so that he could be with us for one more Christmas. And most importantly, he helped us to focus on the real meaning of Christmas. My dad passed away in April of 2015, and that first Christmas without him was devastating for our small family. Despite my grief, I carried on with all of our Christmas traditions. The house was decorated, shopping done, the tree adorned with heirloom ornaments. I encouraged mom to do the same, telling her that's what dad would want us to do. 
My dad and I had a special relationship, and I loved him fiercely. To this day, I'm still amazed at how well I coped that first Christmas without him. I believe that God lifted me and supported me so that I could be there for my mom. My first Christmas without my mom, which was last year, was a different story. Being an only child, I felt orphaned. I couldn't muster an ounce of spirit. I had no interest in decorating the house. I couldn't bear to hear the sound of Christmas carols. The thought of my mom and dad not walking through the kitchen door with a hug and a kiss on Christmas morning was sickening to me, as was the thought of seeing the empty, their empty chairs at the dining room table. I just wanted to hide away until the holidays were over. And then God spoke to me. After my dad's passing, my mom developed a love for cardinals. She firmly believed that the cardinals visiting her bird feeders were signs for my dad in heaven. Her love for those birds even inspired us to use them as a theme for her funeral. And thus evolved the Memorial Cardinal Christmas tree. Last year, there were no Santa figurines, no stockings on the mantel, no candles in the window, and no seven-foot tree. Just a little four-foot Memorial Cardinal Christmas tree. And that darn tree brought me so much comfort. Christmas morning still wasn't easy. The tears flowed when no one came through the kitchen door, when acknowledging the empty chairs, and when remembering my mom and dad in our prayers. But God came through. God came through and brought us great comfort on that Christmas morning in the form of a pair of cardinals outside our dining room window. I anticipate that this will be another blue Christmas in our household. Due to COVID-19, our only child will not be at home to celebrate with us. It will just be my husband, myself, the dog, and the Memorial Cardinal Christmas tree. We'll be missing our son and our loved ones in heaven immensely. Yet this Christmas will be different and that I've learned to put my thoughts to God and know that he will bring me peace. To sit down and begin to think, how might you answer this first line? My God, why? Why? Why, why is it hurt? Why did you take the ones I love? Why is it that my family is so far away? Why? Fill it in with your own response and run with it. See where it takes you. Take the time and write down all that you're feeling. Let God know just how disappointed you are. Just how sad you are. Maybe even just how angry you are about where you find yourself in this time and this place when all the world seems so happy and you feel left behind. And then if words of thanks, words of trust, words of praise, if they should start to bubble up, write them down as well. See where they take you. As in the psalm, remember those times when God has acted for you in the past. When did God deliver you? When has God broken through the darkness and offered you light in the past? Remember those times and celebrate those times. Gracious God, we come to you this evening to express our confusion, 
regarding our relationship with you. You know that we come to you with heavy hearts that we find hard to unburden. It is particularly in this time of year when darkness of long solstice nights collides with the brilliance of Christmas lights that we find it so hard to endure our losses, so hard to express our sadness and our grief. We find ourselves confused and sad and lonely. We feel the intensity of those losses. In the midst of the darkness, Lord, come. Come with your peace. Come with your comfort. Come with your solace. Come to us and offer us hope. The hope that we are unable to find without you. In the midst of our hurt, in the midst of our anger, in the midst of our grief, break through. Empower us to see the light. Empower us to be your servants. Empower us to find the joy that is there. Send to us the signs that we long to see. Remind us of those times in the past when indeed you did break through the darkness. We give you thanks for the community of faith who shares with us the gift of hope. May we hear that gift in new ways. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us dare to go out into the darkness, even when we are uncertain, even when we are afraid, even when we are hurting, trusting that the light of the world is out there, trusting that the darkness will not overcome it, trusting that the gift of the Christ child in the manger is a powerful gift that will break through even the greatest darkness and will bring us the hope we need to continue to live our lives for Christ. Go, knowing that the grace and peace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ goes with us and before us always. Amen. Good night.